What would you call it when somebody dives into a Discord server that's an absolute hive of degeneracy to expose its contents to the light of day? Peering deeply into the abyss, archiving and cataloging the things they've found, and bringing the results back from the living void to be seen by the general public. There are many things that one could call such a task, however in this context I'd be inclined to label this as vivisection, and the reason for this is the methods and the intent. You see, the subject of vivisection is taken apart while still alive, and is done so in a way that can leave them in distress and can even be considered torturous. The individuals who will be shown to you over the course of this series are still very much active in what they do, and are very much active in the furry fandom as well, and my goal is to expose them in the most painfully humiliating ways that I can. In this series, I'll be vivisecting a server filled to the brim with one of the worst types of people you can find on the internet necrophiles. Before we dive too deep into this, I want to give my sincerest thanks to Rouge Moonbat, an individual who not only took that plunge into this Discord server with me, but archived far more of it than I could have alone and built the Google Doc and accompanying Google Drive for this series, which will be released to the public at its conclusion. Those documents have all the information that Rouge was able to stomach archiving on the individuals who occupied this server as well as all the information on their various other social media accounts that they elected to post themselves. Anything you can find in these was voluntarily published by the users in the server, and the link we followed to get into that server was publicly posted on the owners for Affinity page. With those things out of the way, we can begin. This story begins as many do on the internet, with an argument. A simple argument between two people, and in the midst of this back and forth, one shot would ring out that led to exactly where we sit today. For the sake of brevity, as we're going to be covering a lot of ground in this series, I'll show you a clip from a live stream that was hosted by a friend of mine and featured more friends of mine that discuss the situation. Days of long ago, through uncharted regions of degeneracy comes a legend. The legend of Jack Redplay and his obsession with necrophilic sexual acts. You see... A little bit ago, we were apparently sitting in the Senate, and Mimali was there. They were ripping on each other back and forth. At least, this is my understanding of the story. Jack decided he'd have a a, a one-upmanship and say, well, you're in a server of degenerate necrophiles. And Mimali was like, so are you. We're in the same server, and turned that on him, like, reverse Uno card, no you'd. And we found out via that, Mimali's apparently there because Mimali thinks it's funny that to be in degenerate servers, but Jack, oh boy, Jack was there because Jack genuinely enjoys on a sexual level necrophilia. And the reason why he apparently consumes the drawn stuff is because he can't get a hold of a live stiff. At least that's what we understand it. Now, there's more that went into this. After I found out this nonsense, I yeeted him from the server. And his response to being yeeted from the server was to proclaim how much he needed help and to consistently bug me for the next day about how he needs to talk to me because I I'm the only one that can help him he, he really needs my help and genuinely I do try to help people but good god I, I'm not your therapist I can't do all of this I can't fix people so monstrous decided to try to take some of my workload so she dragged him into the server everybody dunked on him and then later that night I kept my word because I said I'd talk to him that day I brought him in server I made it very clear the common denominator all of his problems is him and he needs to grow a pair of balls. He needs to be able to have a spy. And he needs to get help for this degeneracy. And his response was to play tough guy, play pretend like nothing we're saying was bothering him. And they get dunked on by a literal 16-year-old later in the night after he came running out of, the, out of the server screaming. Because somebody, we still don't know who, contacted Stalin out of nowhere and passed him logs of Jack's degeneracy within the server that he knew somebody was sending Stalin and is obsessed with finding out who that person is, likely to try to save his own face. Now, there is a lot more to this aspect of the story, and for those interested, I'll be linking the VOD of that stream in the description below, along with all the other resources used for this video. Information about Jack Redplay between that time and the waning days of 2020 is difficult to find outside the archived conversations in the server that we'll be digging in through soon. However, a specific altercation did bring Jack 
back into the line of sight for myself and various other users on Twitter when he elected to commission snuff artwork of the persona of a YouTuber he despises, Shiloh Connor. The artwork in question was a picture of Shiloh's persona lying dead on the floor, which was posted in direct response to Shiloh on Twitter by an anonymous user who captioned it with, pretty obvious what's gonna happen next, which the user follows that with a tweet saying, you're just asking for it. It had later been confirmed by the artist who created it that the piece was commissioned by none other than Jack Redplay, and while I commend the artist for being honest in this instance, I can't give them much credit considering they took the commission without verifying if this was acceptable by the owner of the persona, as well as their entire catalog of artwork on Fur Affinity consisting of almost nothing but snuff fetish artwork. In my opinion, they're not equally as bad as the people we'll be talking about in this series but they're not even close to a Boy Scout either. And frankly, I think the world would be a much better place if they grabbed some rope and took a 10-foot fall out of a 20-foot tree. In addition to this revelation, an anonymous user pretending to be Jack leaked a few other incriminating things as well. The conversation segment on the screen shows Jack was using this artwork to insinuate what he'd do to Shiloh, as well as their significant other, if Shiloh didn't shut up. Now, I'm sure many people on the internet are familiar with the death threats position. However, given it's coming from actual necrophiles and being made out in the open with artwork to go alongside it, I would argue that it feels far more like a credible threat than your garden variety angry DM many people receive from outraged incels and fedora tipping nice guys. The user pretending to be Jack, who we'll call Stinky Kitty, later DM me with a link to a fur affinity journal by a user named Adago. Apparently, this was the user hosting the necrophilia server that Jack had called home. I followed the link, which led me to this journal, as you can see on screen. Amid the wall of what I can only describe as the ravings of a nihilistic madman sat a Discord link, which I didn't quite dive into right away. Before I actually jumped in there, I made sure to archive a handful of journals on Idago's personal fur affinity page regarding the topic of necrophilia, so I could get an understanding of how he felt about it. Aside from one journal where he tries to signal boost the Your Character Here commission of a snuff artist on the platform, I was able to recover one that I'd like to read for you right now. I am tired of seeing various snuff artists or commissioners being harassed or disrespected on Fur Affinity. They are a really small community with my favorite kind of combination of dark subject matter with a touch of, or sometimes a whole truckload, of sexy thrown in. And due to the harassment, this already small community is shrinking, and less art is being uploaded of this type. God, I feel like I'm reading the fucking lost ramblings of Chris Crocker. This angers me. Why is it our society has decided gore and death is PG-13, like in the movie Tremors, but the second a dick is visible, it's taboo? Even Michael Myers' Halloween has the killer murdering people either during or shortly after or before having sex. Sex is not some holy, sacred thing. What are you, Catholic? <laughs> Sorry, that's so... Okay, okay, let me try and get back into character. It's a natural part of the body, and if death and gore is PG-13, so should sex and yes, full frontal nudity of male genitals. But no, apparently death is fine as long as there is no visible sex or arousal involved in it. Society makes no sense and I won't conform to it. <laughs> I plan to commission and upload more snuff-related art, and also photograph sad and dramatic pictures of dead animals, usually roadkill. What? what the fuck, dude? Just what the fuck at all? What is wrong with you, Adago? There will be no warning or teaser tags before you click, and there will be no separate accounts made to segregate my watchers that like snuff from the ones that don't. I like the subject matter of snuff, and if that offends or bothers you, either get over it or get out. I'm not going to sit here and justify the lunacy I've read to you in this journal with a point-by-point -point rebuttal. The absolute insanity within this journal should be self-evident, and pretending there's an argument to be had here is charity I am unwilling to give to Adago. After all, I'm not Catholic. If you can't understand the difference between having sex with a living person and having sex with a corpse, then that's between you and your therapist, and this video certainly can't do enough to fix the damaged wiring in your head. But this is a good time to segue into our next topic, that being the server's owner.
Adago has a very cultish mentality when it comes to individuals who create and enjoy snuff artwork. There's a very putrid air of entitlement that permeates from him when this topic is brought up, as though creators and enthusiasts of that disgusting subject matter are entitled to the respect of everyone around them. Moreover, a very childish indignance is put on display when discussing the topic, whether on his Fur Affinity page, as I showed you earlier, or in Discord conversations, such as the one I'll read to you now. I just find that behavior kinda childish and whatnot, and going on a tirade about it is only going to make a fool of yourself. Yep. At least I know it's fiction, in parentheses, the art, and I would never pull that off to real individuals. I guess that fellow can't separate fiction from reality. He said so, and he lacks the empathy to comprehend others having more self-control. I just can't help but grin at the ridiculousness. The sad thing is, this happens a lot. It's just a lot less dramatic. Many snuff artists get convinced they are the scourge of society and delete their accounts and artwork. We keep losing good snuff art that way, but the scat, diaper, and feet people are still all over the place. Also, I still detest that society embraces vor but condemns other forms of snuff. It's like dude, they are eating someone alive. That is far more terrifying than getting choked, but my opinion is the minority. I've done vor art, but it was never the lethal type. Unless you write in the description that they get coughed up later, people will naturally die in there. Lack of air and stomach acids exist. I was never a fan of cartoons that ignore basic natural rules like that. Like, the whole reason I got turned on by hanging is because it's a documented occurrence. It can happen. I want you to just, like, remember that he's turned on by hanging because it can happen. That's gonna be important. I only do execution scenes and anything murder-related when it's either a gothic theme or an action theme. Back to that silly individual, I personally believe there's still a child at heart. At heart, yes, but in body they are an adult. This proves my point, we are a generation of mental illness. Mental illness is fine if you can control it, but when you cannot, then it's a problem. And a lot of us, mainly Antifa, are mentally ill. So It's kind of fucking ironic right there. So, <laughs> he's calling anyone mentally ill. That's kind of a kind of a point of irony I wanted to point out. Adago has a habit of talking about snuff artists like they're some form of bonded entity, as though it's inherently bad that some of the people who create it manage to develop something resembling a scruple and set that part of their career as an artist far behind them. Instead of wishing them well, Adago makes a conscious choice to blame society, as though he's trying to show everyone his second-rate Joaquin Phoenix impression before he gives us all what we fucking deserve. He also has a very skewed perception of what is and is not accepted by a majority of people, and if you asked many within the fandom, few would endorse any of the art forms he's listed, and even fewer outside the fandom would as well. While it's true furries by nature are deviants, which I can attest to since I have my fair share as a furry myself. Most tend to draw something of a line when it comes to fetishes that can actually be acted upon and cause harm to creatures that exist in reality, which Adago himself even states is why he likes snuff. It can happen. He says so in his own words. Adago also enjoys mixing in various flavors of degeneracy with one another, as you can see in these posts. Trying to find ways to snuff my feral. This is also a dog he has apparently created in the game Second Life. He's trying to find ways to snuff a feral dog, meaning it is not anthropomorphized in the slightest bit. There is no human aspects about it, and it is not a sapient creature. It's about as hard to snuff a feral as it is to drown in Second Life. Might have to buy some arrows and just use the default dying animation. Adago, what the fuck are you doing? Who the fuck hurt you this badly that you think it's actually easier to create a dead virtual animal than it is to meet a real-life human being? What the fuck happened to you, motherfucker? Like, Adago, this is some Buffalo Bill tier shit, okay? Like, what the fuck? But it doesn't just end there. He doesn't just invent creatures to be harmed. Adago also enjoys hearing stories about how others were threatened with harm. Huh. It just occurred to me that I have no idea what to say for the first time in a long time. I joined this group to be able to say whatever I wanted to say, to get away from all the SJW white knight LGBTQI bullcrap. It was good for a long while, and now it's getting filled with... 
Stuff that makes me feel really wrong inside. Don't get me wrong, I don't want a safe space, or to restrict what you guys say. I came here to get away from that shit, lol. I guess I just feel a little out of place here, because everyone else here seems to love Necro and Death. Well, that shit scares the shit out of me, lol. Not entirely sure what to say or do now. This little vent didn't really bring me to any real conclusion, except that I feel weird, lol. Meh, ah well. Have a good day, I guess. Oh. Wow. Is it that bad in normal furry land now with SJW? Yeah, it's a little annoying following someone who you've looked up to for a while on Twitter, only to find them sharing tranny propaganda, urging people to punch Nazis. It's fucked. As much as I hate necro stuff, all the creepy stuff here, I'd much rather put up with that than see people calling for violence. I'm a little over these bloody snowflakes. I just want to point out the fucking irony again, where this person is tired of seeing people call for violence, but he's actually 100% okay with sticking into a server that, you know, is filled with people who jack off to dead people. That's, that's kind of fucking ironic, but we're going to continue on. I am sorry you feel uncomfortable. Your company is enjoyed. But if this stuff is too dark for you, I won't take it personally. Yeah, sorry Ed, you're truthfully a good guy, but yeah, this stuff is way outside my comfort zone, lol. Some fantasies really should remain just fantasy. That's why I fell out with a friend. As you know, I'm in Tavor, and well, a former friend said that if he had the opportunity to eat me IRL, he'd do it without hesitation. He'd kill me even if I begged him not to. It's just a little too real for me. Death is just too dark, especially if it relates to IRL in any way. Well, like I said, I talked the dude out of it. I just can't deny that I was turned on by the concept. Heh, <laughs> that's fair, lol. I'd be lying if I said the thought of my friend doing that to me IRL didn't turn me on. It made me super aroused, then super sick. You know, vomit boner, XD. He didn't seem too happy with the thought that I spent 15 minutes dry heaving in the toilet due to what he said, lol. I cannot say I have ever been aroused and then physically sick from the idea. I have been sick from anxiety and being shy, but not from a kink. Of course, like I said about the dark chocolate, there is a bitter aftertaste of guilt. I do hate myself for the fact I am aroused by the concept of someone's life ending, but I figure as long as I do not actually do it and simply observe it, then I am not a bad person. In fact, by controlling my urges when I could just become an evil serial killer, I am being really nice, lol. How mentally fucked, how absolutely banana sandwich do you have to be to think you're doing a civil service by not being a crazy serial killer? Oh yeah, I know I could just go around killing people and fucking their eye sockets, but I choose not to. I should get a fucking medal, am I right? Truly humanitarian of the year material. The absolute gutterfuck even expresses arousal at the story I've read you where another friend of his displays immense discomfort when somebody he knew told him he would eat him in real life. While I'm sure a doggo would argue, Hey man, lots of people in the fandom like four, there's nothing wrong with it. I'd simply counter by saying, but few outside the realm of complete psychopaths would have a boner when told the story of how somebody's friend threatened to cannibalize them. I think there's a slight difference between those two things, you know, just a small one, just a, just a smidge. But don't get me wrong. I'm not feeling a high degree of empathy for his friend. He's one of the degenerates who called this server home, and in our next episode, we'll be introducing the remaining cast. Like I said near the beginning, some of these people are active creators in the fandom, and it just might shock you some of the names I pull out of my hat for you to see. So, dear viewer, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this tasty little prelude into the new series on this channel, because we're going to be cutting this one apart for some time to come. But. Before we go, allow me to give you a dramatic reading of one of Adago's vents from his server, just because I think it's extremely funny. Keeping this vague because I intend to go to bed and the details would be way too long for most to want to read. Every I have a close friend I feel like I can really trust someone they are also friends with says and or does something disrespectful to me. In this case, they talked down to me like Simon Cowell, and I lash back, and then they turn on me and support the other person. Now, since this is a reoccurring theme, people will conclude it's not a them problem, it's a me problem. But what I cannot wrap my head around is why. 
why do these smug, smart ass, egotistical assholes get the status I want, and then when I try to ascend to their level, I get smacked down hard. And if I bite back, then God help me, I am fucked. I had to beg so hard to be spared being kicked out of this RP group, kiss so much ass, and Brown knows so much. Why? What makes them deserving of power and not me? All I did in this instance was submit a character profile that was admittedly OP. But that was because the smug smartass in question was a mod that had a god characters. And I wanted a, I wanted a spirit from purgatory with enough souls enslaved to try to at least be a worthy advisory for a god. They made it abundantly clear I was never going to be allowed. <laughs> give me a fucking moment. I'm sorry. G give me, give me just a, <laughs> give me just a fucking minute. <laughs> they made it abundantly clear I was never going to be allowed to have a god character or have a character capable of fighting their characters. I was never going to be a mod, and my attempts to try to rise in power were obvious and pathetic and that I was a selfish fuck for trying, and I just wanted to outshine the other characters. I don't want to outshine anyone. It's just the smug asshole mod had his god character chastise and belittle my character to the point he almost wanted to kill himself, and all his god has to do is sneeze on him to kill him if he defies the god. And then, out of character, he is a mod and I am a nobody, so he can chastise and belittle me out of character too. I said fine, I will junk the character. I accept their refusal, but I did not make it for the purpose of outshining the other players. Well, apparently saying that counts as back talk and disrespect towards the mods. By my logic, as long as I do not defy their authority, I am doing nothing wrong. They said I can't use the character, and I said, fine, I will junk it. But then they said why I made it, and I said, no, they were wrong. And they got pissed. I dare defy their judgment of my motives, and I guess that equates to dis- er, not equates, it equals. That equals disrespect and disobedience. Now my friend sent me this message saying I am on a final notice warning. He will throw me out for being negative and disrespectful if I do not clean up my act. So I just had to brown nose so much ass and suck so much dick. I just want to throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> Dude, it's a roleplay server. It's not that serious. Chill out. God, switch to decaf, Kimasabi. I feel like my entire point of existing is just to be humiliated and belittled until everything I ever was in my past lives is... Lives? Lives, sorry. My past lives is burned to cinders. Once upon a time, I felt pride. I felt important. I felt smart. Now I am trash, and if I say I am not, I get punished so severely. I could just say fuck it and quit the roleplay, but this is one of the last roleplays my boyfriend interacts with me in, and this whole ordeal was in a discreet private Discord server, so he has no idea there is any problems. He is going to be mad at me and say I am a immature, self-destructive idiot for not being passive and bending the knee like he does on a day-to-day -day basis. <sighs> Sorry, that, that crying was kind of just impromptu. Let's get back on track. What a life. What a way to live. How miserable and pathetic. I still would rather die than be that passive and accepting of my position. And I have a feeling life is going to keep beating me down until I am so broken. I not only accept a pitiful passive way of life, but embrace it. I bet they're still talking shit about me privately and planning to make a new threat if this one dies. I didn't invite everyone but me. Fuck. Even being big, I wrote way too much. I'm sorry. Good night and goddamn. 
Oh my god, Adago, you are such a fucking fat, pathetic, sad dork. You are not just a degenerate, you are a complete fucking loser. As always, the artists who contributed are linked below. There's a link to my social media and my Discord server as well, and I'll catch you all later.